Welcome to worship. Our preacher today is Ruth Dale, chaplain at Price Home. And one of the residents at Price Home, Mary Fearholm, is reading the scriptures. Our prayers today are offered by Carol Evans, worship leader at Queen Street. Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Look, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So it shall be. Amen. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, while we acknowledge you as King, we know that you are a King unlike any earthly King. A King unlike any that we could imagine. For when we think of Kings, we think of power and privilege, trumpets and fanfare, palaces and riches. And yet you left heaven to meet us, your creation, on earth. You chose a stable over a palace and a cross in death. 
You are a king who invites all to come as they are, whether rich or poor, busy and hassled, lonely and bored, happy and joyful. You are always happy to see us, even in our reluctance, always anxious to speak to us, to remind us of your great love for us. And knowing that you love us, we bring our confessions to you. For the times we have placed ourselves above others and above you, Lord, forgive us. For the times we have abused our positions and bent the rules to suit ourselves, Lord, forgive us. For the times we have looked down on others, Lord, forgive us. We are truly sorry and ask for your forgiveness. Even during difficult times, God is with us, loving and forgiving us. Let us receive that love and forgiveness now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
A reading from Luke 10, 25 to 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Of which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who was kind to him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Good morning. As many of you know, I'm the chaplain at Price Home. And a couple of weeks ago, I was chatting to some of the residents. We were having a light-hearted discussion about television programmes, past and present, that they'd seen and enjoyed. But the conversation took a completely unexpected turn when one of the residents said, I always used to love watching the news, but I can't now. It's all about wars and fighting. Refugees having to flee their countries. The politicians spend all their time being nasty to each other instead of working together. It seems you can't be friends anymore with anyone who disagrees with you. There's so much hate. Whatever happened to being kind? Whatever happened to being kind? That question really made me think. And I'd like to share a few of those thoughts with you today. The Oxford Dictionary describes kind as caring about others, gentle, friendly and generous. And it says the opposite of kind is unkind, cruel or nasty. Well, that seems pretty clear, doesn't it? We all need kindness. It's a language that we all understand. Kindness is more than just loving people. It's loving people more than they deserve. Kindness is going the extra mile. It's grace put into action. The story is told that once, in the days before the ending of slavery, Abraham Lincoln bought a slave girl with the sole purpose of giving her her freedom. She didn't realise why he was buying her. She thought that it was simply another transaction in which she was involved as a thing. So, he paid the price for her, and then he handed her papers 
of freedom. She didn't even understand. You're free, he said to her gently. Free, she said. Can I go wherever I want to go now? Indeed you can, he said. Then she said, If I'm free to go anywhere, I will stay with you and serve you until I die. Legally, she was free. But love and gratitude had bound her in a new and willing service. That kindness that was showed for her. Pramila Puri was born in Bombay, now Bombay, which is now Mumbai. Raised in The Hague, Netherlands, and settled in London for the last 15 years. She's a film producer and she's been promoting kindness in the industry for a few years now. But she realised that adults seem to have lost the concept of being kind. So, in 2015, saddened by the state of the world, she founded the Be Kind movement. The aim of the movement is educating hearts and minds. She says, I believe that educating the hearts and minds of young citizens through the development of emotional intelligence skills is critical in preparing them for managing mental health, cultivating a deeper sense of self-awareness and enhancing their understanding of human behaviour. And this means, in early years, embedding a culture of kindness and how kindness, or lack of it, can impact the world around them, including their peers, friends, families and wider community. Higher emotional intelligence equates with an improved sense of well-being and the ability to deal with deeper issues such as anxiety, bullying and loneliness, all of which can start as early as primary school. What a wonderful aim! But how terribly sad that it is needed that children as young as five have already been taught to hate by the words or actions of adults. Moving on to 2019, in December of 2019, Caroline Flack posted a quote on Instagram. In a world where you can be anything, be kind, she put. And just 72 days later, she took her own life. Scrolling through Twitter after the news broke, the hashtag be kind started appearing more and more in relation to her death. On Instagram, users were sharing her December post about kindness and reflecting on their own conduct. Without knowing the rights and wrongs or the intricacies of her mind, there was a consensual feeling that she'd been treated badly, unkindly, and that this unkindness had in turn led to her death. Seeing this reaction f felt pivotal. You could sense the stirrings of a shift, a widespread call to be kinder. Flack's post, with the new context of a life lost in desperate circumstances, sparked a national conversation about kindness and how we treat each other. A t-shirt bearing her words raised over £300,000 for the Samaritans. And Russell Brand shared an emotional statement encouraging people to use their network of connections to convey love and support of ki and kindness. In fact, I wrote this sermon on Friday the 12th of November, intending to record it on the Saturday. So the next morning, I got up, 
to see Facebook telling me, if you can be anything in this world, be kind. I was not aware, but apparently November the 13th was World Kindness Day. Moving on. In 2020, COVID struck and our lives changed beyond recognition. But it's been truly moving to witness the array of kind gestures, actions and intentions that have taken place throughout the world during recent times. In the face of adversity, we've seen the true spirit of humanity shine through. And there is an abundance of research to highlight the mental, physical and emotional benefits of showing kindness to yourself and others. Kindness has been proven to increase our happiness, reduce stress and improve emotional well-being. At the same time, spreading kindness offers us the opportunity to connect with others building a stronger sense of community and unity with friends, family, neighbours and even strangers. During the pandemic, people have looked out for neighbours, shopped for those who were in lockdown or isolating and found ways of keeping in touch with the lonely. And do you remember the Clap for Carers campaign? which has seen people across the whole of the UK come together to show their appreciation for the key workers during the pandemic. This simple act of kindness let all of those working on the front line know that their hard work and commitment is appreciated and of value, hopefully building up their spirits and boosting positive morale. During lockdown, a list of things we can do to be kind was published. Here are a few of them. Number one, send a message to a friend who you've not spoken to in some time. Ask how they are. Reconnect and see what develops. What better time to do this than now? Number two, Thank someone who you appreciate. We all relate to the basic human need of feeling appreciated and valued. And saying thank you for a small or big gesture can make a meaningful difference to somebody's day. Number three. Write a letter to an elderly or vulnerable person in your local area. Loneliness is an increasing issue in our modern world and the power of the written word to show someone you're thinking of them can matter more than we may realise. And number four, offer to do some voluntary work. The Five Ways to Wellbeing research highlighted that one of the most common things that make human beings fundamentally happy is the act of giving and giving your time, efforts and dedication to a cause you believe in can reap multiple benefits all round. It may seem small to us, but it could make a huge difference to someone else and in turn help lift our happiness and well-being. One act of kindness can change someone's life. Many such acts can create a movement. When I was reading about the Be Kind movement, I discovered that it was backed by many famous people from sport, film, television, etc. But I couldn't find one single comment from a church. And I thought that was sad and a missed opportunity. In Galatians 5, Verse 22, we read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 6 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Luke 6.31 says, And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. And of course, the story of the Good Samaritan that we heard from Luke 10. It began with the question, who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus told the story, then asked who the expert thought was neighbour to the man in need. The expert in the law replied, the one who was kind to him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So being kind is actually a command from Jesus. Go and do likewise. The story of the Good Samaritan speaks for itself. We should be kind to everyone, not just to people we know. The attacked man was a complete stranger to the Samaritan, yet he went out of his way to help. And not only a stranger, the Jews and Samaritans were sworn enemies. In today's world, we need to think about this when we hear of so much racism and homophobia. Just this last couple of weeks, we've heard about the problems of racism in cricket and how calling someone racist names is just banter. Remember that definition of the opposite of kind was cruel and nasty? Why call anyone names at all? We've seen a lot about refugees recently, many crossing the channel in boats at risk to their own lives. Refugees from Afghanistan here in Scarborough. Many people in Scarborough have been incredibly kind. The Rainbow Centre was overwhelmed by the response. But there have also been many adverse, nasty comments. Remember that opposite of kind? Cruel, nasty. In the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus said, everyone is our neighbour. Not just the people who look or think like us. So, can I ask that you join me in trying to reverse the animosity and hatred that seems so prevalent in our world at the moment? How? Each time we're about to speak or type a Facebook message or response, before we do, can we stop and think of that verse from the end of the story of the Good Samaritan? When asked who was neighbour to the man in need, the expert in law replied, the one who was kind to him. And the command of Jesus, go and do likewise. Amen.
When Ruth sent me an email with an outline of her service so that I could link the prayers of intercession, she put a few comments and at the end she put one sentence, we'll leave it to you. When I first read this, I thought it was the part of the prayer. Well, it is now. We will leave it to you, Lord. Help us, we pray, to always be kind to others. Help us to realise that we don't know the burden others are carrying, the pain they may be in, what they may be thinking, or their background. We will leave it to you, Lord. You know best. But be assured of our prayers and show us how we can help. And as we pray for the world, where do we begin? We offer our opinions and judgments on situations we don't really understand. But let us offer our kindness and compassion on every situation that troubles our world at this time. We will leave it to you, Lord. You know best. But be assured of our prayers and show us how we can help. Amen. And now a prayer for Queen Street. At Queen Street we have so much to be thankful for. We thank God for the vision of Cornerstone and those with the skills to build it. Grant us all a little patience as we look forward to completion. We ask for prayers to show us ways we can make best use of this new space and for those whose lives will be touched by events and gatherings at Cornerstone. We thank God for our Queen Street Together team as we continue to reach out to those not yet comfortable coming to church. Help us all feel connected by your love. We have an extremely busy two months ahead and we ask for God's blessings on our large gatherings. The return of the Symphony Concerts and Scarborough College Speech Day Hundreds of people will come through our doors during these events and services and we ask that lives will be touched and people will be aware of God's presence. We thank God for all who work, worship and support our church and Lord, we will leave it to you. Be assured of our prayers and show us how we can continue to serve. Amen. <laughs> 